What's up guys, this is Rich with Wolverine Airsoft and we are live at Wolverine Airsoft headquarters here in Kingsport, Tennessee. Today on What the Tech, we are going to take a look at the Spartan trigger board, how to tune it, what you need to know. This will also cover tuning for the Quake recoil stock since it uses our Spartan system. So let's jump right in. So to get into programming mode, the first thing we need to do is get to the battery. With the Spartan, it's generally housed in the grip, especially when you're running the recoil stock. There's no room in the buffer tube, so let's go ahead and pull the battery out. So, with the battery out, we're ready to go into programming mode. But before we do that, we want to make sure we have everything else set up. So, we're going to grab a chronograph. Now, if you don't have a chronograph, don't worry too much. Uh, you can test this, just like always setting the dwell. You can just watch the BB trajectory, and you can see when the trajectory starts to drop off, uh, that means your dwell's too low. Next, we're going to load a mag. And finally, we're going to get our air tank set up with the regulator set to the pressure that we want to operate at. Before we jump into this, this is what we call live fire tuning. We call it that because we're actually shooting as we tune the gun. So, put on your safety glasses, and let's get started. To boot into programming mode, what we're going to do is unplug the battery, and now we're going to plug in the battery with the trigger held down. Easiest way to do this is just to kind of get it started, but not push it in. Hold it down. If the solenoid clicks when you pull the trigger, you push the battery in too far. And now push it together. <coughs> that should put us in programming mode. The first thing we'll notice is that when we pull the trigger, nothing happens. But when we release the trigger, the, B the system fires. So that tells me I'm in programming mode. Now there are two things we're going to program in programming mode. First is dwell. If we are set to the semi-automatic position, we are setting dwell. If we switch to the full auto position, that will set rate of fire. For the rate of fire, I don't really necessarily need the air plugged in, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. You will be firing the system here, so make sure you're pointed in a safe direction and that you're wearing your safety goggles. If I just pull the trigger and release, it's our current rate of fire. If I hold the trigger down, it will modulate, in this case, the rate of fire. It'll do the same thing with the dwell when we get to that setting. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I get to the rate of fire I want. You can see once it got to the highest rate of fire, it kicked back down to the lowest rating in the menu and then started back going back up. All right, I like that setting. So I'm done with my rate of fire setting. <clears throat> now we're going to go to dwell. And here's where you want your chronograph if you have one. And this is where the live fire part of it comes into play. What we're going to do is we're going to put a, a magazine in once we're ready to shoot. And then we're going to go shoot into the chronograph. But just like with the rate of fire, as I hold the trigger down, you can hear about once every second and a half, the system is going to fire a shot. With each shot, it is reducing the dwell. If I wait long enough... All right, you heard the double tap there? The double tap means you're back at the maximum dwell value. Just throwing numbers out there, let's say it starts at, you know, the highest number is 12, lowest number is 3. It's going to start at 12, right, as when you double tap, that means you're at 12. Then you're going to step down to 11, 10, 9, 8, keep going down. <clears throat> and what we're looking for on the chronograph graph is we're looking for the velocity to, to start to drop off a little bit. That means the dwell is as low as it can be. But first we get to the highest setting. So I just went through, had it tap twice. Now I'm at the highest setting and we can go step up to our chronograph and we can give it a shot. All right, so we'll go ahead and put in a magazine. And now we are ready to set our dwell. So I'm just going to hold the trigger down. All right, so the last two shots, I was right about 315, 317, somewhere around there. The last two shots went 308, 300. That tells me my velocity is starting to drop off. So. <clears throat> You can just go all the way back around the menu if you want, or you can double tap. If I double tap quickly, it will back me up a step. So now I'm back up at 308, 309. 
with this type of system, leaving it 5 to 10 FPS below is going to give you maximum efficiency. We work 315 though, and for maximum accuracy, we like to go back up to right before we drop off. There we're at 313. 313. So we've set our dwell, we've set our rate of fire. All we do is unplug the battery or just leave it sit for a minute or two and it will time out. Now we go back in. That's the Spartan programming system, live fire tuning. Let's head back and finish up. Now there's one other thing you can set on your Spartan FCU and that's your burst. Now, uh, if you have one of the original Spartans, which is the vast majority of the ones out there, you have two burst settings. You have full auto and three round burst. With the new Spartan FCU that we've just started shipping with the Quake and that we'll soon be shipping with all of the Spartan editions, <clears throat> there is a third option which is your uh, is semi-auto only. So you have, for your select fire position, you can choose either semi-auto, three round burst, or full auto. <clears throat> now, we don't program this in programming mode. Uh, I am back in uh, normal fire mode. And you'll notice that the battery is inside the gun. There's no need to remove the battery to change this setting. All we're going to do is switch the gun into semi-auto <coughs> and hold down the trigger for 10 seconds. <coughs> now when we release it, <coughs> we are now in three-round burst mode. If we do it again for 10 seconds, go back into full auto. It's now semi. semi. So now we do semi, semi. If we do it one more time, <coughs> all this dead time. I haven't been counting. Four, five. You're back in full auto. So that is how you set your burst mode. If you don't know which one you have, two easy ways to tell. One is just try it and see whether you have three settings or two. And the other way you can tell is any Spartan board that was shipped with the Quake stock will have the third semi-only setting. And if you don't know whether you have the new board or not because you didn't get the Quake stock, then you can look at the board. The new version with the three settings has an extra connector on it, an extra connector port for the output for the Quake stock. Uh, if, you only, if you only have the one output for the solenoid, then you have the original board. So that's it, guys. That's the Spartan edition from Wolverine Airsoft. We love this system. This is our best-selling system. And honestly, it's our favorite for all of our shop guns. The majority of our shop guns run this system. It is super simple, very, very easy, and reliable to set up. Since there's a process that you can follow, it's very, very simple. It takes like 30 seconds to get set up once you know what you're doing. Um, in addition to that, your battery is well protected. You don't, your FCU is internal, so it's protected from water damage. There's not a wire harness like you have with an external FCU that you can damage. Super robust system. We love this. Uh, like I said, our favorite system for all of our shop guns. Uh, that, that we run on the field and put through abuse. So, hope this was helpful. As always, if you have questions, drop them in the comments section below, and we will see you guys out on the field.